Ah, see him a beast when you hear that sound like ah, Yeah, beat on the beat when you hear that sound like Ooh, Yeah, bitch and the champ only me one round like ha, Yeah, me, I'm a G bring he in the sound like Mike Owens here. Today I'm joined by Sadabushi, the AFL welterweight champion of 2022, who's returning for the 2023 season, where he faces J- Jara Hussein Al Salawi on the 14th of April. Sadabu, great to sit down and chat. How are things? How are things for you today? Hey, thank you for having me. Uh, things are great. I, I'm uh, I'm in good spirits. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just uh, looking forward to next week. Of course. First and foremost, I'd like to know, um, obviously you won the world title back in November. So was it always your intention to re-enter it to the 2023 season? For sure. For sure. And that, that was uh, that was my goal. Like, I've, if you if you go back and watch, I've said it for a couple of years now that like I'm I'm not even in my prime yet. So uh, I'm only getting started. Dare I ask at 36, when, do, when are you planning to hit your prime? I believe maybe this year you uh, you I, I think you'll start to see things come together a little bit more, and next year I might hit my prime. Why why is that specifically? Like, what is there a particular reason? Uh, to be honest, like I just looking at like how I'm improving, and uh, you know sometimes it takes it takes a while for you to. Uh, like when you learn new things, uh, you got it in the gym, but to be able to to make it and trust it when you fight, like it takes it takes time. And, and uh, I'm a student of the game, and I love to learn. Uh, and I have amazing people around me, so I just know that with a little bit more time with them uh, and uh, my mindset and my work ethic, uh, I believe uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a, a magic combination course uh obviously we were talking a little bit off camera there about the fact that you've over the last year, couple of years moved your camp over to to be primarily based at extreme couture excuse me yeah. um obviously we've got a lot of lot of high profile names over there chris curtis is in action this weekend obviously the, yeah. the always in the news sean strickland uh, just can you just give me a little bit of, of a flavor of what the room is like the training room with all the the welterweight and middleweight bodies yeah, both of those guys are are uh, great fighters, great friends of me, and uh, um, like a big part also why I'm here because uh, just like you said, the, the talent uh, is is so high out here. Um, just to be clear, like why I made the move from Sweden here was not because of lack of talent in Sweden, but it was easier for me to stay focused out here because right now I'm I'm here uh, and I, I'm away from my friends and family that I grew up with, right? So mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm making uh, I'm making an effort to make sure that I'm, I'm I didn't make the move in like in vain. I, I want to make it count. Also, uh, because like we have amazing talent in Sweden, but it's just more people on the mats here. Uh, in, especially here in Vegas, where you have fighters coming in, uh, like just for a couple of weeks or 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 whatever, uh, so you always have fresh bodies. But the core team uh, out here is amazing uh, with uh, both those guys and a lot of other fighters that are great: Edmund Shabazian, uh, Brad Tavares, uh, mm-hmm. Ty. Uh, yeah, yeah, to name a few. Who is harder? Who is a harder spar and matchup? Sean Strickland or Hamzat Chimaev? They both are great in their own right. I'm not gonna sit here and say anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're both great. They're both great, and uh, and both great friends of mine. And and I always, um, I, I've grown a lot by training with both of those guys, and um, I will continue to do so. Of course, of course, right answer. Um, let's talk a little bit about your, your upcoming fight, and obviously your opponent, um, a previous 2022. A competitor in his own right. Um, what are your opinions of him? What do you think he does well? Give me your scouting report, if you like. Uh, yeah. So uh, he fought last season. Uh, I believe. I believe he's a he's a very good fighter, very polished fighter. Uh, he doesn't do a lot of uh, mistakes. What you see is what you get, basically, with him. He doesn't beat himself. Like you have to go in and you have to beat him. Uh, I believe stylistically. Um, it's a very good matchup for me because uh, I'm taller, faster, and more creative, and I believe I'm going to be stronger as well. Um, so I believe that it's going to be tough for him to close the distance. Um, but 
uh, like I'm I'm ready for for whatever I'm ready for a striking fight I'm ready for him to try to take it to the ground and and uh, because um I have to I have to count count for uh, if his plan A doesn't work you have to try to go to plan B and mm-hmm. plan C and I believe that I'm ready for uh, whatever like I said uh, but I believe that my plan A is going to be so good so I don't have to go to plan B in your last fight you obviously won the world title back in November so generally speaking the next fight after the world title win is a world title defence so are you looking at this fight like defending the welterweight title from last year or is this completely a fresh start for you uh, so I don't look at it as a defense because because for me it puts me in a defensive mindset today, which uh, nothing about me for next week is gonna be defensive. Mm. So uh, I'm what I've done is I won the title last season. I'm very happy for it. I worked hard for it. Um, when the cage when the cage door closes, uh, that's not gonna uh, do any difference. So. Mm. I'm gonna prepare like I did last season. Um, we we approached this year and this season and this fight just like I almost you could almost think that I lost my last fight. Like we're like we're we're not taking anything lightly for granted. Like like I said, we're working on not only this fight, but to get better and better and better each fight each year. So um, so I don't see it as a title defense. Mm. Um, with that being said, obviously quite a few changes to the welterweight bracket this year. Obviously, the biggest omission in terms of, in terms of star power and name value is, is Rory McDonald's obviously retiring from the sport. So, what do you make of the welterweight bracket going into this ten man tournament? Yeah, it's got, like to be honest, it's gonna be fun. Um, always nice with uh, uh, new guys. Uh, uh, so I'm I'm actually looking forward to seeing the different matchup. There's a couple of matchup that I'm very intrigued to see. And um, uh, I've been, I've been, I, I always made it to uh, to the playoffs, so I'm not worried about myself. But it's gonna be fun to see who's gonna join me for the playoffs. Of course. Um, do you have a particular name in mind that you think? Obviously, it's very early days, but the a particular name you look at and go, he's most likely going to be the guy that I'll I'll fit square off against for the world title again in November twenty three. That, that's impossible to say because you cannot control who you're gonna fight in the semifinals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, so so it's it's and also my mindset, not uh, what something that I really like with PFL is the format, like it forces you, and I should say, forces me to not think about a certain matchup, it forces me to get better and get, get better overall. So I'm ready to fight to face uh, and fight uh, whomever because, uh, like I said, I cannot control it, doesn't matter if I try to call someone out like after the first two regular season fights the bracket is what it is one fight one faces number four two faces number three uh, for the semi-finals you know so you have to be ready to face anyone so i don't want to shoot myself in the foot and feel like yeah i really want that guy and then no i'm, yeah. I'm gonna be ready for whoever well what's quite interesting about that point is when i watched you live and i covered your fight back in cardiff for the carlos leal fight in that yeah. press room, that that even after that fight, every virtually everybody's question centered around a final against Rory McDonald, which the very next fight, Delano Taylor completely does the does the upset and proves your point completely valid that you can't predict or strategize for a specific opponent yep. in a specific yep. round. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Like I said, that's something that I love with PFL: win and win and advance. So you have it all in your own hands, and you have it all in your control. There's no politics, so to speak. Uh, you cannot call someone out and try to be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be in the semifinals instead of that guy." No, mm. if you do, it, you know. So, so you have to be ready, uh, and also like fighting uh, four times in seven months uh, or whatever the schedule looks like. Uh, it's a lot. It's taxing. So you have to also like think about like that's a big part of 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 pfl and 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 you know staying ready and so it's not easy that was a point i actually wanted to mention is obviously the the short notice or the short turnaround from each fight and the particular yeah. methods of recovery particular methods of rehab that you use to keep yourself fresh for each matchup um to be honest uh 
it's not like um i have a i have a i have great like uh, i have a great regimen out here i i go to my massage therapist chiropractor regularly and uh, like before and after practices i make sure i get my recovery and and all of that like that's very important for me um but at the same time i believe the biggest thing in between fights and be being able to just week after your fight get a new opponent a new name a new camp start new camp uh, i believe it doesn't matter if you mentally not there it, it's not it doesn't matter what you do with your chiropractor so the mental the mental aspect of it is the biggest one of course obviously the pfl tournament is twofold at the end of the year you you could win a million dollars but you will also win a world championship should you be successful um, doing this a second time around will be successful, of course. Doing this a second time around, um, is there a particular emphasis on one of those two things that you want to to gain more? Like, is the million dollars more important, or the being being two time champion? Being a six time world champion is the most important. That's that's what I'm going for this year, and uh, everything else around that will sort itself out. When it comes, like I didn't I didn't start with uh with the money in mind when i went to uh, like martial arts when i went over from kickboxing and muay thai to mma and uh, my thing has always been like we like i said in the beginning of this call like i'm i'm, I'm just trying to improve uh, and i'm staying i'm staying in the gym and i'm me and my trainers we're approaching this like this is the most important fight of my life because it is the next fight is always the most important so for me I'm not trying to look at like, oh, look at, think about uh, what can happen in six months, seven months. No, I'm focusing about next week because if I'm looking past next week and trying to think about the championship and trying to, no, you might not even make it there. So I'm focused all my intentions to, to what's in front of me. Of course, that makes total sense. So I guess from a last question from me, um, obviously when you, when you when I speak to all, all these, these great PFL athletes that I get access to, we, we hear a consistent theme and that is how hard the season format is both on the yeah. mind and on the body. Yeah. Uh, with yeah. that being said, having accomplished your goal and becoming PFL world champion, five time world champion uh, yeah. last year, how do you keep the motivation strong to go in and, and try and do it again? Oh, because I did like, like I said, it's easy. I love what I do. It's a privilege for me to be able to fight and be able to be, fight for PFL and, uh, like I'm, I don't do this because I need it. I don't do this because, like, I do this because I love it and I love the challenge. And this is an amazing challenge. And I, I think that I'm great at it. And I will show that. I will show myself first and foremost that last season I became a champion, but I have even more to give. I have. I'm. I'm even better than I showed last season, and I'm looking forward to that because I, my thing has always been. I'm my biggest critic, and when I when I make myself proud, that's when that's when we have like viral clips. I love it. I love. I love also love the thought that you potentially haven't won the world championship last year. The thought of you or only entering your prime this season is a, it's quite a scary thought for any welterweight in the PFL watching this interview. Nevertheless. Sadabu, thank you so much for your time. It was a real pleasure to get some more of your time and connect after Cardiff. And I wish you the best of luck for next for next week. Appreciate you and let's do this again, all right?